Have you ever noticed your conditional formatting rules duplicating and fragmenting on their own? You're not alone. In this video, I'm going to explain what causes this and a small tweak to prevent it happening in the first place. First, let's understand why this happens. In one of my recent videos, I showed you how to create this merge cell effect using conditional formatting so that you can filter and summarize your data with formulas and pivot tables and maintain the clean appearance of merged cells. However, if you insert a row and then go to the conditional formatting manage rules dialog box and look at it for this worksheet, you can see the rules have duplicated and the applies to range has fragmented. This happens when your rules have relative references to rows above or below them. As you can see here, my original rule is referencing rows three and four and the new rule has a blank row in between them. So now it's comparing row 11 to row nine. This is the same as what happens to formulas in the worksheet. You can see this one here is referencing eight and nine, and this one is referencing 11 to nine. So it makes sense that the conditional formats would work in the same way. The fix is to avoid relative references to rows above or below the current row. And there are a couple of approaches to this. The first approach is to use the offset function to reference the row above without explicitly typing the cell reference in the formula. In simple terms, offset returns a reference to a cell or range of cells that's a certain number of rows and or columns away from a starting point. For example, offset A4, comma, how many rows do we want to move? Well, if we do minus one, it's going to move up one row. How many columns do we want to move? Well, none, we want to stay in column A. So zero there. Close offset. You can see it returns department, which is the value one row above A4. So instead of comparing A4 to A3, explicitly we can compare A4 to the offset of A4 by one row, which is effectively cell A3, but without referencing row three explicitly. So let's copy that and we'll test it out. Selecting the range of cells I want to format, we'll go in and manage rules. Double click the rule to edit it. And instead of equals A4, A3, we're going to equals A4 offset A4 by one row up. Click OK and OK. Now we don't see anything different here, but if I now insert a new row, and let's go back into the manage rules dialog box and we'll look at this worksheet. You can see we have one rule and no fragmentation of the applies to range. Happy days, kind of. There's a problem with offset in that it's a volatile function. So if your spreadsheets are large and or you have lots of conditional formatting rules using offset, it could significantly slow down your workbook, in which case you'll want to use the next solution. If you've ever spent hours fixing broken formatting or wondering why your formulas aren't working the way they should, my Excel courses show you exactly how to build spreadsheets that just work. No weird bugs, no guesswork. Everything's step-by-step -step and practical and comes with support from me personally. You'll find the link in the description and pinned comment if you're ready to stop second-guessing Excel. This next approach comes from Neil Blackwood and it gets around the volatility of offset with a clever defined name trick. All we need to do is select any cell other than cell A1. Then on the formulas tab, define a name and I'll call it cell above. Now the scope defaults to workbook, but I'm going to change it to the current sheet, which is this one here, because I don't need to use this name on any other sheets. And then in the refers to, I want to refer to cell H3, which is the cell above the current selected cell. And the key here is to make sure this reference is relative. So there's no dollar signs in the reference. Click OK. To demonstrate how it works, I can use it in any cell. So equals cell above, there it is there. You can see it's referencing the cell above, press enter, and then whatever I type in here will be picked up by the cell above reference. And I can write it anywhere and it will continually update relative to the cell that I type it in. Fun fact, if you use it in row one, it'll return the value from the very last row of the worksheet. And keep in mind that you could also define a name for the cell below or the cell to the left or right with this technique. Okay. Now I can set it up in my conditional formatting. Let's go back in on the home tab and we'll manage rules. And I'm going to double click to edit this rule. So now instead of 
referencing cell A3 explicitly, I'm going to use my defined name, cell above. Click OK and OK. Let's test it out. We'll insert a row. Let's go back into the Manage Rules. We want to show this worksheet. You can see there's no fragmentation and no duplication. The nice thing about this technique is it's not volatile like offset. Very happy days indeed. If you watched my previous video on using conditional formatting to create a merged cell effect without the limitations of merged cells, you may have noticed when filtering, some of the department names appear twice, like we can see here with sales. This happens when there's a hidden row or rows followed by an unhidden row for the same department, which we can see here, rows 15 and 16 contain paid and overdue, followed by row 17 with pending. To get around this, we can use this formula here with subtotal and offset. Now I've already applied it to this table, so now when I filter for pending, you can see sales doesn't repeat. Now this file is available to download from the link in the video description and pinned comment, so you can grab the formula that I've used. So which do you prefer, offset or sell above? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to go even further, there are loads more tools in Excel most people completely overlook. But once you start using them, like cell above, you'll wonder how you ever lived without them. I walk you through five of them in this video right here. You'll pick up at least one new trick, guaranteed. I'll see you there.